Somebody say, I don't know how you can pastor and have that TV. I don't know how you can pastor and 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 and, and, and have these meat lights in the church. And I, I mean, they've been critical over everything. Yeah, sure. I don't know how that y'all can have service. And I saw them lights over to the side. I'm like, did you see anybody speaking in tongues and shouting? Did you miss all that because you were so distracted by some lights? You better not come here. <laughs> And I'm thinking, man, I'm messed up in the head yeah. over silly, crazy things. I'm telling you, when I come to the house of God, my focus is on God. My focus is on Him. I'm hungry for more. I want more. And all people say, well, you can't live like that. You can't do that. All I got to tell them is I don't know what works for you, but I know what works for me. And I'm living for God. And I feel His power in my life. And I feel Him anointing and leading me. And I can't lose rest over what you think I should be doing and how I should be living. I've got to make it to heaven for me. I can't get you to heaven. You can't get me to heaven comes down to it. I can preach to you and try to motivate you and excite you, but when it comes down to it, it's the choice. When it comes down to it, you've got to decide there's a new chapter, or you're going to say, hey, this is all that God has for me. That's it. How sad would it be if God closed the book on your chapter today? How many of y'all would be thrilled to just say, okay, that's the end of my chapter. I'm good. If you're not, then you ought to stand up right now and say, God, I want a new chapter in this new year. I'm not done yet. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to keep drinking. Somebody ought to say it because I'm telling you, the devil doesn't want you to make it. The devil doesn't want you to go to church. The devil doesn't want you to be on the fire for God. So he's going to do everything he can to distract you. If you've got a calling on your life, I guarantee you the devil's going to do everything to mess it up. But you've got to make up in your mind, I want a new chapter. And I want what God don't let me get so entangled with all the choices of the world and all the things that I can do in this world. The Bible says in the last day there'd be people marrying each other, there'd be people going on with life, have, having babies, things going great, and, 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 and not even aware that the trumpet is up to the lid. Not even aware. But man, I'm telling you, I... I have closed off enough distractions that I feel the connection to that portal of heaven and I feel His nearness. I can't explain it and I'm not going to sit here and give you all these reasons why God may be coming back this year or next year. I'm just telling you, I feel that something great, something huge, it may not be the coming, but something huge is happening. Something big is stirring in the atmosphere and all I know is whether it's the trumpet that ready to be sound that I'm going home or the next great revival, I want to be a part of it. Whatever it is, whether it's heaven or just the jubilee, whatever Some of us are going to miss it if we stay in the same chapter. we got to grow. But I came on assignment today. I came to wake up the dreamer in you. I came to speak to the destiny that God put in you. I came to speak to the anointing that God put in your belly. I came to stir the embers and fan the flame. I came to rebuke Hopelessness. Come on, music. Come on, we get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Have a call to the altar because I feel God's getting ready to do something huge. Somebody shout, I rebuke hopelessness. I rebuke discouragement. Let's call these things out. I rebuke despair. Somebody said, I came to cast out fear. Somebody just felt that leave their life right there when they said it. Come on, somebody shout that. I came to cast out fear. Brother Dustin, I want you to shout out. I come to cast out disappointment. I come to cast out disappointment. Some of us let disappointment. We just get disappointed at ourselves. All the time. Man. Brother Dustin, I'm telling you, God has got a new chapter this year. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. Dustin is not going to be afraid of his destiny. 
This guy would get down on himself, call me and say, man, and I'm doing that, I'm trying this, I'm, and I'm just thinking, man, I see where you came from, and I'm proud of you. And that's what God sees in you too, is that a new chapter has started. But now it's time for you to say, I receive this new chapter. I receive this calling. I receive everything that God has for me. This year's going to be different than any year before me. I'm not going to walk around in disappointment. I'm not going to walk around with my head on it all. I'm not going to walk around and remember what I used to do. Seat if you got to. Hey man, we're going to church. Some of us got to start learning the difference between conviction and condemnation. And some of us just been feeling condemnation all the time, and it's not God. God will convict you gently, and you'll know. But when it tortures your mind to the point that you say, I can't be used by God. When it tortures you to the point that you say, well, man, I just can't fulfill this calling because I got this. Man, that's, that's condemnation. But when you just feel God convicted, he'll say, hey, this is what you need to straighten up. But I want you to get up. God doesn't say, I want you to lay here. I, I know that sometimes that's the way we handle things in the churches that, hey, I need to set you down for this long. And you need to lay aside. And I know there's time for that. And there's, there's a reasons for that. I understand all that. But, but I'm telling you what God is doing in this season. He's not sitting there saying, okay, you, you messed up today. So I don't want you to preach for three years. You messed up today. So I want you to go to the corner. God is saying, you messed up today. I want you to get to an altar. And I want you to pray through. I want you to pray it out of you. I want you to pray to you're right with me. I want you to pray that you feel the Holy Ghost again. I want you to pray that you feel that you can preach again. I want you to pray until you can get back up again. I want you to pray until you can worship out loud. I want you to pray until you feel that you got loose. I want you to pray. Pray through what happened. To pray through. We pray for each other. We pray for miracles. But I need some people in this place to learn how to pray through. God. The three Hebrew children were taken to a fire that was so hot that the men that threw them in died. I started shouting right there. I looked back over my shoulder and went, He didn't make it, but I'm still standing. You're still standing because God intended. Not to just bring you to the fire. He intended to bring you through the fire. If God intended just to bring you to the fire to die, you'd already be gone. You'd already be, there'd be no hope for you. There'd be no chance. But if you're still here, if you're still breathing, if you're still here on this Sunday afternoon, come on, there's got to be something in you that says, God didn't bring me to this fire to die. Amen. Because others died. Others didn't make it here. But here I am. If God still got me kicking, if God still got me alive, if God still got me up this morning, then he didn't bring me to the fire to die. He brought me to go through, and I will come out on the other side. I'm preaching through intense pain in my body right now, and every time that I project, I feel so much pain in my body. But I rebuke that devil. I've been preaching this whole message in so much pain you don't even know. But I'm telling you, I'm here to declare that I'm going through this. I'm going through this. I'm going through this. Even if the fire, somebody said, but the fire hurts. It must not be like he did for the three Hebrew children because the three Hebrew children were up in that thing dancing and that fourth man was there. I don't see a fourth man. It's just me and my cat and we in the fire. I don't like cats, but man, <laughs> Nobody else. Nobody else. Right. That's what we do. It's just me and this. And I'm telling you, this fire hurts. If God intended me to be in this fire and make it through this fire, it wouldn't hurt because it didn't hurt for the three Hebrew children. How do you know? That's right. Maybe it did hurt. Maybe that's what got them moving and dancing. Maybe it hurt a little. Probably not. But 
what I'm trying to get you to see is that the fire didn't kill you. That's right. That's right. And it might hurt, but you've got to look at the facts here. I'm still alive. I'm still Maybe it didn't happen the same way. I, I remember from Moses that he stretched out that rod and there come a highway right there. Dry, they just walk on through. But then there was somebody else that come to the water, remember? He come to the water. I could see that's what I'd have been doing because if it worked for Pops, you'd think it'd work for me. And I'd have been standing there saying, are you kidding me? I actually got to get in this thing before it start moving. It, for Moses, it, he just went to, stretched his rod and boom, it come wide open. Why for me? I'm standing here in the water. My goodness. What if he'd have just been like us? He'd have splashed around and had a fit. Yeah. Sure. He just walked out of there with what underwear that'd have been it. Yeah. But, but he said, no. I know what God's done in my life. That's right. God didn't bring me here to stop God didn't bring me here to turn around. God didn't bring me here to die. He's not going to let me drown. You may not feel like you used to be, but if he's got you up, if he got you, 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 somebody said, man, I feel like I got to be at church. That's the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, I feel like somebody's praying for me. I feel like I can't give up. That's enough. That's enough. If God's in the boat, it ain't going down, baby. If God's in it, we're going somewhere. If God be worried, if God wasn't there, I'd be worried. But I know God's in it. You see the water begin to move. You see the water begin to ripple. Amen. Somebody would say, well, man, that's a, there, there's a fish under there swimming and stirring it up. We're trying to break it down. I didn't ask you to come here and be logical. I asked you to come here and have faith. I asked you to come here and just have faith. Amen. Somebody else said, man, ain't no fish. It, it can't be explained. That's, that's the hand of God. I see a ripple. Somebody would say, that's just a ripple, Adam. No, 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 no. That's the hand of God. I'm going to take another step. Then it begins to open up. Before long, nobody can explain it away. Before long, nobody can say that's just science. That's something else. There comes a point that they've got to say, this is God. Sister Simon, God didn't hit you. Way back when it first started. And we just said, man, that hospital was the best hospital. That staff was the best staff. That doctor was the best doctor. And they caught it. And they got in there. And they did what they needed to do. Man, they had wisdom. And they took care of it. But you've come this far. You've come to the point to where nobody's going to be able to explain it away when your miracle lands. Nobody's going to be able to say, well, it's because she had a good doctor. It's because she's been taking chemotherapy. She's been taking what she's supposed to be taking. Girl's crazy. That's good. That's okay. It's going to take they had, we got to start thinking like they had. I'm telling you, people stay home bleeding to death and quoting scripture. Nowadays we say, man, we, if you did that and let your kids stay home and bleed and just pray for them, we're going to call DCFS on you and you're going to get those kids taken away. We're living in a world that is against faith. We're living in a world that's against you having faith. Y'all stand up even stronger today and say, I declare in the name of the Lord a miracle for me, a miracle for my house, a miracle for my mind, a miracle for my family, a miracle. I declare in the name of the Lord. I'm not going to stop preaching no matter how bad it hurts. I'm not going to stop preaching no matter how bad it hurts. someone just get out from where they are and come around this altar. I want you to envision yourself stepping into that water. And it might not just blow wide open for you, but it's 
gonna start open tonight. I believe while I'm talking to you, something in your belly is stirring. Something in your belly is waking up. Like Joseph, you may have been stripped of your coat of many colors. You may have lost your job. You may have went through a bad divorce. You may have lost your house. You may have lost your health. You may have lost your peace and lost your joy. You may have even lost your faith for a while. You may have been in places and done things that you knew were wrong. You may have let anger and resentment and hatred and unforgiveness fill your heart. But that was the last chapter. Somebody shout last chapter. When you looked at me in my last chapter, I was broken. When you looked at me in my last chapter, I was humiliated. When you looked at me in my last chapter, I was miserable. I was lame. I was angry. I was hurt. I was disappointed. I was lonely. I was crying. But that was my last chapter. Look at your neighbor and tell them I see a new chapter opening in my life. But we, we need to proclaim these things. Why? Yeah, right. Amen. Look at him and say, I see myself in my next chapter. And I'm looking good. I know some of y'all want to say that. You say it all the time. That's come on. I'm looking good. I'm looking good in my new anointing. I'm looking good in my new clothes. I'm looking good in my new joy. I'm looking good in my new peace. I'm looking good in my new year of blessing. I'll tell your neighbor, you better be careful how you treat me. <laughs> 